Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Today, something completely different, not completely different, but a bit different. Uh, this is a very interesting kit that we've been sent um, to review on loan from our good friend Chris Doney. Uh, who lives down there at uh, Bridgewater in Somerset, a very nice part of the world indeed. And he sent us a frog. Now, I, I, I'm sure he and one or two uh, others of you have been trying to convert me to the merits of frog. And maybe you're just slightly starting to win here because they are quite interesting subjects. And I must confess, maybe it was just where I was living at the time. That there weren't many frog kits. I did have a couple. Uh, in fact, the next one we're going to see in the not too distant future from somewhere else. Um, I think it's possibly one I've actually had. But... They weren't readily available and there weren't many of them around and the ones that I did have, I seem to remember, weren't terribly good so I got kind of a negative sort of uh, attitude towards them. So maybe this will change when we have a look at some of their other work. So what we've got here is obviously the Mirage 3E stroke O interceptor ground attack jet fighter from France. 70 cent scale of course. Um, one interesting thing that catches the eye straight away is they have this um, base, a bit like Matchbox did, thing called the Sky Base. And it's an action display stand. It enables you to pose your model in all sorts of ways, as you can see. So they're basically saying that you can have it taking off, in flight, diving. Well, I don't know how you're going to do that. You'd have to attach that to a wall, obviously. <laughs> oh, there you go. Freestanding all wall mounting. Well, be careful with that, because we all know that that could go very badly wrong. Banking as well. But it's interesting, isn't it? It's something a bit different. Now, on the rear, and I do like this, this is a bit Matchbox-like. Um, I've actually got the sort of paint colour call-out guide, painting guide, all here. And you've got two options here. You've got one for, Aust for the Australian Air Force. Um, and I have to confess, I, I'm, I don't think I'm alone in saying this, that um, those of us in the Northern Hemisphere... Um, now, I, I'm going to show my ignorance here, and a lot of people will start sniggering. Others will probably agree. We forget that Australia bought a load of these Mirage 3s and they were really good uh, aircraft of course which uh, helped us uh, in the UK during the Falklands War because we had a lot of knowledge um, and help from Australia about uh, evaluating the Mirage 3 and obviously that was a major help because Argentina had them and I think the Australians were able to give quite a lot of data about the flight characteristics and how we could find an edge over them in combat. But um, putting that aside, you know, the Australians really made good use of these and um, they always look quite cool in the Australian colours as well, I think. So, yeah, it's easy to forget, though, that Australia had them. It perhaps wasn't a high visibility for us up here in the UK and perhaps in the USA. We forget about it. But, um, yes, well, it's going to put that right because it's well remembered here. So, we've got the Australian uh, skinned one here on the right. Um... Notice they don't have any high-vis sort of Aussie markings on the top, no roundels, which is kind of odd. Normally you get the Aussie roundel with the kangaroo, but you don't get any there on the top wings, do you? How odd. Got them on the bottom wing, but none on the top. I found that a little bit strange. But anyway, uh, here in the normal French colours, you've got um, French Air Force in 72, the fact they're both from 72. Uh, Nancy, which is on the southeast um, border of France. Um, Certainly on the, not, not right at the south, but on the east side of France. And then you've got your typical NATO grey, dark grey and uh, dark green, uh, NATO colours. Uh, and then this has got the roundels for the French Air Force, top and bottom on the wheels, so there we go. Quite like that though, it's a bit like the Matchbox. I, I like this clear, nice graphics. Tells you what you need to know and it's all very visible, you know, especially when you buy the kit. But you pick that up in the shop. Because of the shape of the... The other thing I don't like about the frog box is I don't really like the shape of the box being sort of narrow and long. It's a bit odd. But anyway, it's not much different to an airfix in that respect. Let's have a look at what we've got then. So I say this is Chris Doney's kit, so I'm going to be very careful with it. Hence the gloves. Uh, in fact, it looks like he's been through this. I think he only acquired it recently from memory, from what he was saying. Um, so I've got to be careful with it because it's probably paid... But there's no sandwich for it. Ooh, it feels like a bit, a bit of moisture has perhaps been ingressed here because it's, the box has got some sort of warping as though it's been maybe in a damp environment but I suspect it's Chris that's very wisely uh, interleaved with the tissues. What he really needs is one of those uh, 
silica gel pack. I'll see if I can dig one out for you. I may have a spare one somewhere. A bit small one though to fit in the box. But yeah, he's going to interleave everything uh, with tissue to try and stop any more moisture getting in, I think. It's, made it, it's just very tightly packed in the box. It's a snug fit, I've got to say. Anyway, we'll pop those over there. Get them all out of the box. Oh, and we've actually got something of interest here as well. We've got Oh, a couple of parts have escaped. We've also got, like Matchbox again, um, adverts on the side advertising there of the products. So, what have we got? We've got a nice looking Hawker Hunter in Swiss colours there. And then we've got a Venom, and that's in, is that the Czech Republic? Yeah, the Czech Republic Venom. Uh, Venom. Meteor, what am I saying? So, I can't even read. I just, I just thought, that's not Venom, what are you talking about, dude? And then we've got the Typhoon, and I think I had that one, that Typhoon. I think that was one of the ones I didn't really care for. I think I've had that. And then on the other side, oh, you've got many more. Look, you've got the Gannett, anti-submarine British Navy and German Navy uh, aircraft. P-47 Thunderbolt. That's cool. P-47D. And you've got a Hornet, which is like a cross between a whirlwind and a mosquito. Long-range fighter. And then the Avenger Torpedo Bomber, used by the UK, USA and Australia, of course. And then you've got a Nakajima Rufi spotter play for the Japanese Imperial Navy. Look at that. So that's a really nice boxing. I like it. I like it. I like the way they went about it. Where do we begin then? Let's start with not having a green screen. Let's zoom back. <laughs> Let's have a look at this little bag that Chris seems to have very cleverly packaged. Still, this is what I do. Put in bags. Same trick I do myself. Now then decals. Well, considering this is, and you know, I haven't checked the year on this, uh, I'm thinking it's mid-70s. Don't think it's later than 1980, this kit. Um, I'll check on scale, mate. Somebody shout up if you've had a look. As soon as I say this, people immediately go on scale, mate. So before I've even got the sentence finished, somebody shouts up what we're missing. So there's your Australian markings for the uh, 1972 variant at... Butterworth in Australia. Okay. To be fair, I think the decals are in pretty good shape. Again, there's been this it's clearly been some moisture ingress somewhere because it's warped everything. But they still seem to be in fairly reasonable condition. Uh, unlike a matchbox, if that gets any damp anywhere near it, they're just horrendous then. It goes dark brown and becomes unusable. And you get your French markings underneath. Uh, your typical it's that interesting how the French have got this rather loudly coloured uh, no step warning on the air brake and then on the Australian one it's much lower key it's still there same place but with much you know without the day glow orange <laughs> which I've always thought was odd because when you see them those of you who like mirages will know all about this of course but um, some of you know that I had a bit of a battle and that's putting it politely with the Edouard 3C mirage and I changed it to, from being the French variant that comes in the kit. This was the weekend edition. Uh, they had lots of problems with the kit, which I'll bore you in there, but it wasn't a good kit. Not one I'd recommend. But I changed it to be the Israeli Six Day War 1967, June 67. And I, um, I altered it to be that, uh, that variant. Um, but it, it really struck me as odd that when the Israelis bought them from France that they didn't do what the Australians have done and make this a bit lower key because they've got this silver plane and it's got these like Daglo orange markers where it says no step on the air brake, you know. Very strange. Anyway, there we go. Pop that over there. Now then, sky base stand. It's going to be cool, isn't it? Very gentle, this one. Mm. This looks a bit delicate, I've got to be honest. Ooh, careful. Extra care for this. It's literally hanging off the sprue. So I think I'm going to not pick it up because it's going to drop off and I don't want it to break, really. Let's just see if I can zoom you in a little on the desk. There we go. There you are. Now then, so it's exactly like the matchbox, uh, but obviously it's not clear. It's not M-shaped, but you've got this ball and cup system. A um, bit bigger than the matchbox in terms of height. It's quite tall. Plugs into there, uh, and off you go. Uh, and a great concept, of course, which we all like and would like to see more of, quite frankly. Then we've got some clear parts, which we'll have a look at here. 
uh, we've got the canopy and I have to say that's a really nice little canopy for a Mirage that's very clear nicely defined framing on the windscreen yeah that's really nice very very good perhaps I should start changing my attitude to frog I'll pop that there and then we've got the ejector seat for some reason it's obviously off the sprue and I think I think Chris has popped it in the bag just for safety. I also notice we've got an intake here, which I'm going to show you. One of the air intakes, that's also off the sprue, so that'll go in this bag as well, just for safety. Okay, so I'll put them back safely. Hmm. I have to say I'm quite impressed. I like the stand, I like the clipper. Ooh, this is tricky. This is tricky. Here we go. Gentle, gentle, gentle. That is very delicate. Hanging on by a thread. Mm. Right, okay. We got there in the end. I think I'll just seal that up before anything goes wrong. <laughs> Alright. Oh, and the day cars were in, weren't they, as well? I forgot. Day cars, they were in there too. So they need to go away. Quite like the day cars, they seem quite, quite good, quite crisp, clear. Nice. So we'll pop them in there too. Again, you've got to be extra careful it's somebody else's property because he doesn't want to have it damaged by any clumsy handling. There we are, I think we've got it done. Fairly sensibly. There we are, hold on. Right. No damage. Right, now then. Instructions. Frog. Now remember, for those of you that don't know, frog stands for flies right off the ground and the reason was they used to do uh, before they did plastic kits they used to do uh, like not so much radio control but I think they did gliders and chuck planes and things like that so it, it's basically saying that the the planes are almost sort of ready to fly and yeah they did all sorts any of you that had those please shout up and tell us more about them because I never had one um so what have we got here we've got a big fold out Ooh, okay it's quite good this big fold out instructions very similar in concept to matchbox again look at this now i wonder where i'm just looking if there's a date on it instead of interest mm. oh wait what five hour doesn't seem to give a date as such nope no date I think we can be sure this is mid late 70s. I think we're talking 74, 75. -ish. But you've got this, Simu. You've got this um, how to put your display stand together. Your sky base display stand. I like, I like the sky base name, that's quite cool. Sky base. There we go. Shows you how to put it together. And then you've got your modelling tips, and it's awfully like, almost identical to the Matchbox style and content, isn't it? Showing using elastic bands, telling you not to put too much glue on. Look at that, that's definitely me in about 1972. Look at that. Just plaster it on, folks. You can't have too much glue. No, you, you can. You can have way too much glue, as we all know. <laughs> then it even shows you how to do masking for things like invasion stripes. Uh, how to do a little, doing just a little drop for little small parts like your propeller spinners. Using tweezers. Put small parts in like your gear doors. Using a pencil to map out your camo lines. And then look at that, it's even telling you to, it's quite quite a good guide. So I've got to give them credit, this is excellent. Cutting a, off an old brush to do stippling effects and how to slide your decals on. That is very good. That is really excellent, I think. Um, it's like the matchbox, but it goes into even a bit more detail still. Also shows you there how to get your sky base, how to mount it into your, your plane. And if you, in the event of a missing part, please fill in your name, send it off to us. We'll see if we can sort it out for you. So, quite impressive, I'd say. Then it starts with the actual construction here, oddly. So you've got your pilot going into his seat. Then you've got some... Uh, gear legs being put into the wheels tyres. It's funny what weird the way they've done this at the bottom of the written instructions, isn't it? Very odd. It just gives you a bit of a re uh, history here, so I think we should read that really. So it says, 
Designed and manuf manufactured by Dassault in France, the prototype Mirage first flew in November 1956. That's 11 years after the end of the Second World War, that's amazing. And shortly after, it achieved a speed of 1.5 Mach in level flight. Wow! So what's that? That's uh, 900 and something miles an hour, 920 miles an hour. Delivery of the later 3E version began in 1964, and these planes are now approached by the Air Forces of France, Lebanon, Pakistan and South Africa. The 3.0 version was manufactured under licence in Australia for the RAAF. The engine has 13,670 pounds of static thrust with afterburners. Snecma ATAR 9C turbojet, maximum speed 1,386 miles an hour at 40,000 feet. An armament 2 30mm DIFA A5 52 cannons and Matra R530 and two Sidewinder air to air missiles. Very good, I like these instructions. Apart from this weird thing at the start of the start of the instructions, sort of at the bottom, it's a bit weird the way they've gone about it. But anyway, number three is you're putting your drop tanks together. Um, he says, is that the central tank? No, there's. Oh, hang on a minute, is that the drop tanks? Yeah, it's different, different styles of tank, I think. Then you've got your sidewinder. No, it's not, it's a matter, isn't it? It's a matter of rocket, this. This is a matter of rocket, this is the drop tanks here. There's your sidewinders. There's your intakes that you got an inner and an outer plate to put on. Now then, got to zoom you back out of this bit. Then we've got the instructions. To me, seem to get better as they go on. But now it suddenly gets really good. I think very, very clear. Uh, even better than Matchbox, I'd say this is the way it looks. Very, very simple explanation of how the fuselage halves go together. So then you've got to. Uh, you got to bring them in and attach. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's a bit strange the way it goes. It goes up and then down. Okay, sorry. So then, that one, then this one. Sorry. So you're building up your wings. That wasn't very clear. Um, top wing and one one piece bottom wing. Remind you to clear the slot here for your sky base stand. And then, as I say, we're, we bring that together with the actual fuselage we've already built up. And then we're putting in our gear and the gear doors or alternatively just the gear doors if you can have it in flight then you're bringing in your fuel tanks and matra rockets and your sidewinders and then on the E version there's like a little like a ray dome sort of system under the nose here if you can see that whoops wrong way in thank you that's it yeah it's like a ray dome isn't it a pod um, and just telling you, basically advising you to make your choices about which weapons and loadouts you want. I've got to say that the way they presented it is really rather good because you've got clarity, you know, how it should sit, how it should look when it's on its wheels there, look, what it should look like from the front view. It's really good. Yeah, I like that. That's one of the nicest, clearest 172nd scale instruction leaflets I've ever seen, I think, really. Very, very good. I think the Chinese could learn a great deal from that, couldn't they? To be fair, instead of having it, you know, with no writing. And this has got tons of writing. Um, and of course, this company was, um, they were owned, weren't they, by, I've got the name of the group that owned them with it on the box. They were part of Triang, weren't they? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Can't see it. It isn't mentioned, is it, on the box or on the... Or on the uh, it isn't mentioned again. Anyway, is it Rovex? Rovex, I remember. Rovex company, part of the Triangle group, do we? Anyway, let's have a look at these um, sprues then. Here we go. So we've got the fuselage starboard side here, all in one piece. So you're not going to have to put on a separate nose. But you are going to have a join, of course, down the centre line. Here we go. So it's kind of... It's raised panel lines and some recessed as well, he says. No, it's just raised. No, it's just raised. But it's very fine. It looks like recessed to the eye. You've even got the, yeah, the sort of jet exhaust is all moulded. It's all moulded in one piece. Can you see that? 
detail around the exhaust pipe. There is some flash as you can see here where they have the parachute um, uh, ejector um, hatch at the rear. But it's fairly nice. And that's much about the dark blue colour, but well, that's a wise colour, I'm not so sure. Then we have got a identical sprue on the other side, of course. This time it's got the tail on, so it's one of these double tails, very much matchbox style. There, yep. Yeah. See? Um, again, yeah, raised panel lines. It's a combination actually, raised panel lines and then it's, it's recessed at the rudder. Um, but it's quite nice, it's very finely done, very subtle raised pan lines. I think that'll be quite nice. Uh, a bit of flash as you can see at the front on that nose. See that? See the halo of flash just here. There. But it's pretty, pretty nice. You've also got your intakes there. There's, that's where that intake must have come off the sprue there. And then you've got the inner intake plates. Uh, bulge out basically to pressurise the air a little bit and slow it down. Then we've got our top wing uh, and again we've got this combination of raised and recessed panel line detail. It's very very fine panel line detail. It's, raised panel lines are usually horrible aren't they? You know even on Matchbox we've seen was it the Curtis Kitty Hawk Warhawk that had the most horrible panel lines of any kit I think I've ever seen. Most unmatchbox like. But this isn't like that, this has got a really nice detail. A little bit flashy here and there, the wings seem okay there. I mean the detail there is, uh, yeah, it's really nice. And you've got the underside, the leading edge of the underside is all moulded in as well. And that's quite nicely done, isn't it? Plenty of detail, you wouldn't really see that in a matchbox, would you? In fairness. Hmm. And then you've got a couple of uh, gear bay doors and then of course you've got your gear legs and wheels. And then finally, we've got the underside of the central area of the wing. So you can see it there. Again, very fine, raised panel detail, but very, very fine. Uh, quite, quite crisply moulded that, to be fair. Not sure if that's coming out on the camera or not, really. It's really... Uh, Quite nice. You've got your side winders, they're quite nicely moulded. That's pretty good. You've got the rear, uh, sorry, the pylons, I should say here. Bit of a problem with the focus, sorry about that. There we go. Pylons there, side winders there. Those are quite nicely moulded, in fairness. Again, nicely moulded at the, uh, thank you, camera. <laughs> got there at the end. Nicely moulded uh, nose leg and gear all built in one piece. Hmm. A couple of ejector pin marks it. Seen it again, isn't it? Thank you. A couple of ejector pin marks there, on, but that's on the inside. Still, you need to take care of them. It's going to be open. Uh, and, and again, that's also true. Can you see it on the there on the nose uh, gear bay door? Or eject a pin right in the middle there. There it is. But overall, I'd say that was pretty nice. There's a nice pito head there at the front here for the nose. It looks quite a decent little kit, to be honest. I'm, um, I'm quite surprised um, at the finesse of it. Obviously these were not expensive, you know, I'm guessing this would be well under a pound, uh, even when it came out it being probably more like 40p. So, they've done it rather well, haven't they, Frog? I'm, uh, in fact, I'd go as far as to say that's probably the nicest Frog so far that I've seen. I'm going to pop them back in here very, very gentle for Chris, so nothing gets, uh, nothing gets damaged. Why is it not going in? It doesn't want to go in, hang on a minute, we've got a problem. Another box packing video coming up when you watch. <laughs> right, let's just do it like that, that. There we go, there we go. That, 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 that. I'm not quite sure how that's supposed to go. It's a challenge to get that to go in, I think. Well, 
I think that has exceeded expectations more than I imagined. My box packing is exceeding the expectations. There you go. So that's the Mirage 3 E stroke O from Frog uh, with some quite fairly interesting artwork. It's a pity it wasn't a bit more to it, but yeah, it's quite nice. So where do I stand on this one then? Pop it there. I think, again, we have to judge these older kits. They have to be judged for their day. You can't judge them against a kit from 2021. Or, or something new that's just come out from Airfix or whatever. Um, that, to be fair, looks a bit nicer than the Matchbox kit, I think, the Mirage, which is the one where they rather foolishly and unusually depicted it, and originally depicted it with the drop tanks under the wings and South African colours, and there were no drop tanks in the kit, which is really dumb of them, I don't know how that happened, but it ruined the kit. If they'd have depicted that without any drop tanks, I don't think it would have sold, so it was a bit misleading, I wasn't very happy. I remember being extremely cross about this in 1973-74. First world problems, you know. Anyway, that one I think is better than the Matchbox kit for sure. What it goes together like is another matter, because the Matchbox kits always just go together like a dream, of course. And that's got flash, so it's going to lose points for the flash. But the instructions are wonderful, the base looks wonderful, decals look fine. I think... Bear in mind, you know, it's early mid-70s. I'm going to give it 9 out of 10 because I think it merits it. Um, the flash knocks it a few points off. Um, and and that's probably it, really. I think apart from that, you know, you've got a nice box, a nice presentation. A nice kit, a really nice mirror. So, 9 out of 10. That's my verdict. Hope you will give me a 10 out of 10. And smash that like button. We need all the support we can get. Um, don't forget those of you that I've got um, the Ukrainian uh, Ghost of Kiev MiG-29 is on, uh, is on auction on eBay. The whole auction is going to charity to the Disasters Emergency Committee. Uh, so I'm getting no money out of it whatsoever. I'm just basically giving it as a donation in effect. So please have a look at that if you would. Um, you'll, you'll soon spot it. You'll see me. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you are a subscriber, double check that you've actually dinged the notification bell. I don't mean double check in case you haven't done it, but there's a real risk that it's been undone and unchecked by YouTube. So please go have a look at that and double check, and that way you'll get early warning of any upcoming videos. We'll have some more interesting ones from these vintage kits coming up in the very near future, but I have to say I was very impressed by that one. Um, that's the nicest frog I've seen to date. Let's see if we can find any more interesting ones in the near future. In the meantime, please look after yourselves. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care. Thank you. And bye for now.